Good evening, Good News Church. Happy Midweek Boost to you. I want to invite you to stand to your feet as we sing together. Just going to focus on the greatness of our God this evening. We magnify Him and make Him big in our lives. And I found that when we do that, our problems seem to diminish because our perspective changes. So, Father, we magnify you tonight. We recognize you are a big God. We invite your presence here. We know that you're here with us, you're in us, and you're for us. So we thank you, Father, that as we exalt you and as we lift you high, oh, that we magnify your presence here. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made i see the stars i hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul my savior guide to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior guide to thee how great thou art how great thou art this is my favorite verse when i think that god is son not sparing and when I see that God is Son not sparing, sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art, and how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God. And oh, see how great, how great is our God. How great, how 
great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, see how great, how great is our God. It's the name above all names. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will see how great is our God. He's the name above all names. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, see how great, how great is our God. How great you are, Lord. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, see how great, how great is our God. How great you are, Lord. Then sings my soul, my Savior, guide to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, guide to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Sing with me how great is our God, and oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Just lift our voices and sing how great, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God, and oh, see how great, how great is our God. The name above all names. You're the name above all names. You are worthy. God, oh, the name above all names, you're the name above all names, you are worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. Father, we magnify you. Oh, you are great and greatly to be praised. So we give you praise tonight. 
all of who we are, but honor all of who you are, Father. We thank you for it. Have your way in this service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome, everybody, tonight. So glad you're with us. So in October, we've been doing um, empowerment training on uh, Wednesday nights, and so we've got a, abbreviated preliminaries here, and uh, so I'm kind of handling all of that. Uh, but thank you for cooperating with us. We're going to continue with that tonight with the uh, Discovery Bible studies that we've been doing that. I, ho I hope you've been enjoying that. And um, the purpose is to help you grow, to help you with your study time, but also there's another part to it is to be able to help others study and grow in the word. And so there is something behind all this. And so, uh, but again, thank you for working with us on this. Um, I've got uh, some announcements from ten for tonight. Uh, a Team Good leader, Leaders meeting on Sunday at 6. And we've been having some wonderful meetings this year, but uh, we've got a really good one planned for you this Sunday. I want to encourage everyone to be out there, be, be there for this one at 6. We have Ed Elliott coming at the end of the month. Uh, we've been talking about the love of God for a large part of the year, and Ed is one of the, the ministers that have brought the, the revelation of God's love to good news, and so I think it's very fitting that he's coming at this time for us, so he'll be here at the end of the month. And then we've got membership coming up. If you're interested in uh, becoming a member of the church, talk with uh, Rhonda Ball about that, and she'll tell you how that all, all works. Well, I've got a scripture for us for offering tonight, a uh, familiar one, Luke 6. 38, and I'll read it for, to, uh, to you. Give, and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. A couple pointers here. You're not going to outgive God. Um, you know, and God is interested in seed time and harvest, or He instituted that. And so, uh, you know, that's His method, the way He works. And uh, you're not going to lose out by being generous. So follow the Holy Spirit. You want to bring your tithes tonight or bring offerings. But, uh, you know, just listen to the Holy Spirit and follow him. That's all we ask. Let me go ahead and pray over our offering. Well, let me uh, mention our... Uh, uh, do I hear something? <laughs> um, if you need an envelope for cash giving, uh, raise your hand and the ushers will bring that to you. Let me go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. Uh, for the honor and the privilege of bringing our tithes and offerings tonight. It's a joy to give. Lord, I thank you. You filled this church with generous uh, folks, and uh, uh, we are a generous church. And I, I thank you, Father. I don't understand it all, but you receive this offering. You take it. You multiply it. You multiply it back to us so that we can be more generous in our world and with our friends and with our family and wherever we go, that we are blessed to be a blessing. So thank you tonight, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and dismiss our kids. No teacher. All righty then. I need to loosen up a little tonight. There's some kind of stiffness in the air. I think because when we sing How Great Thou Art, that's a, that's a great song. No, no criticism. <laughs> it can be, though. 
I was thinking about my grandfather's funeral, so praise the Lord. I love that song. Um, okay, I need to skip along. Um, good news tonight, we are going to be doing a Discovery Bible study again. And all month, like Matt said, all month we have been focusing on equipping you with the skill of doing a Discovery Bible study. So I just thought tonight would be good to see how it's been going for you. Um, how many of you can remember last week what we talked about on Wednesday night? What scripture? We have one hand. Let me see if we have any other hands. Okay, little girl with the red hair. Yeah, I want, to, I want you to tell me. That's right, James and John's mother came and made the appeal that mothers often do, give my kids special privileges. Y'all remember that? Anything else y'all remember from last week? What was the, what was the big lesson from last week? Okay, let's see who was here. Mike Metzler, you wasn't, you weren't here. Tanya, you weren't here. We have a whole different group of people. Were you here? Were none of you here? Oh, this is crazy, right? Okay, well, good thing we got tonight. Maybe we're gonna redo last week. Matt, what you got? You were here. No, you weren't here either. No, you were here. Yeah, Matt Stevens. <laughs> okay, what did you get from last week? He got her, and he answered her honestly. All right. Nate, what you got? Uh. Yeah, you want to be correct. So that's the, it's the passage from Matthew 20, um, verses 20 through 28. And so that's right. The, if, you want to be, if you want to be a leader, you want to be great, you're going to have to serve others. So I know most of you weren't here last week. Last week was when the storm came through. That's right. Okay. It's all coming back to me now. But the brave people, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> um, and so did anybody obey anything from last week? Because one of the questions we ask with Discovery Bible Study is, how are you going to obey it? So did anybody obey anything? Any of y'all back there obey anything? Is there any obedience? All right, well, this is going so well. We'll just move along, okay? I tell you, it's really great here. Thank you for that. All right. Now, I want to talk a little bit before we get into tonight's Discovery Bible Study of, again, go over some of the things of why we're doing Discovery Studies. I guess I need to include some of the information I told you last week. And one of the things we discussed last week is that these Bible Studies, these Discovery Studies are being used around the world, particularly in other nations, to, and, and really that's um, the influence that we are drawing from is that it's being used in other nations to rapidly reproduce um, disciples and that people are being reached in nations where there are no established churches or where there are very few Christians and it's a method that they found and it's an ancient method it comes from the early church that um, they practiced a form of this but it's a way that they have found that they're able to get the um, get people into the scripture help them learn the scripture help them begin to obey the scripture and what and and then come to know God through his word so it's it's being used to spur these disciples making this these disciple making movements around the world and we are learning the reason we are learning this is on Wednesday nights now we are studying and and upping our empower you know our life-giving skills and we're learning how to reach people and make disciples and do the works of Jesus so that's one of the main reasons we are equipping ourselves with this skill is so that we can learn to use this to reach people outside the church for example one of the ways we know that um, we can reach people is we can talk to people and see if they have anything that they need prayer for and 
um, you ask people if they need prayer and, and we're in Augusta, Georgia and there's a number of people that'll say, yeah, I can use some prayer and you can pray for them and through, you know, that can start a spiritual conversation and maybe you can share the gospel and oftentimes a person like that may be the point you need to clarify is that their own good works are not going to make them right with God, but they have to receive the sacrifice that Jesus get you know when he offered himself receive his sacrifice and trust in that to make them right with God but there are a whole lot of people that you can't get that far with them when you get to prayer they don't want your prayer they don't believe in prayer they don't believe in God or they don't believe in your God so what do you do with a person like that I mean just we've had we have people like that that come here to Good News Church sometimes some not long ago I was talking to a man right up here after service and he said I just don't believe I respect that you believe. I respect that these people here believe. I know they believe something. I know they feel something. But I don't feel it, and I don't believe it. And you can't just make yourself believe. You can't just, yeah, I'll believe. You can't. Believing re requires a change, and it, 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 it there requires a change in your thinking, and there's something that happens inside of you. Faith has to come and arise. And so what we're doing is it, we're preparing to go and be able to do these discovery Bible studies with people is as we open the Scripture and people see the Scripture, and people are curious about Scripture that don't know God, people that don't know the Bible oftentimes are curious about it. If you learn to talk to them in a way that's not weird or lord it over them. And, and so because of that, they're, they're willing to look into the Bible and see what God says about life. And so you open the Bible and you start doing some of the things that we're talking about. And they can see in the scripture, God will reveal himself to them through the scripture. And so it, it's a way to introduce people to God through the scripture, which how God introduces himself to us isn't it through his, he reveals himself through his word the other part of it that's really great is that there's nothing needed but scripture and some questions you don't have to have a building you don't have to have a microphone you don't have, a, have to have a special study you know you don't have to have a preacher you don't have to have a tent in case you were you saved in a tent. Um, you don't have to have a, you know, you don't have to have all these things that, that we think. We don't have to have a choir. We don't have to have Nate on a guitar. We don't have to have anything except some scripture. And in fact, in some places where people don't have the scripture written in their language or they are oral learners, even then you don't even have to have written scripture. People can just tell the stories. And that's sharing the stories of Jesus. And in that, you can discover God through that. So it's being used in, in some marvelous ways. And I believe it will work well for us to reach people who don't know God, people who are unfamiliar with Scripture, people who don't believe, and even people in our area that are of other religions because they're here. And Jesus loves them. So those are some reasons. Um, another thing that's really good, and we've seen this very, you know, in play right here, is it gets people to actually engage with Scripture. Um, one week we were doing something, not the Discovery Bible study, but something similar, and I remember James Robinson was sitting right there, or maybe he was sitting over here, and he said to me afterward, he said, I'm not used to working on Wednesday nights. Well, re in reality, James, you're not used to working on Sunday mornings either because you, your job is to sit and listen. Well, I take that back. Your job is to sit and look like you're listening. And some of you have even abandoned that part of your job. Some of you, your job's just to sit. And so it's about you engaging with the scripture. And so when we you open the scripture and you have to ask questions and all, it's it's work. It's it it's a greater level of participation than just I came, did I get my gold star in heaven for coming? You know? Um if you just came for the gold star, once you cross the threshold, the angels gave you the gold star, you can already go home. All right, so, but it gets people to actually engage with Scripture. And then one thing that I really like about it is this is inductive learning and not deductive learning. I'm not just telling you everything. It's like the difference between a, a young man in his chemistry class. Sharon is a chemistry teacher. Sharon oftentimes has to rush out of here because she's got to go set up her lab because she teaches a lot of things through kids standing in a lab doing experiments. They're learning on their own, as opposed to her standing at a chalkboard and just lecturing and writing things and saying, write this in your notebook. Oftentimes in the church, 
because we have that's the only that's the main way we like to communicate it's the way we've been conditioned to communicate it's the way that people like me like to communicate because we like to talk so we want to stand up and just lecture you and you as we lecture you often do what the kids do when they're getting lectured about chemistry you know they're writing notes texting looking out the window instead of you getting in the scripture and yourself learning and le- and just and you discovering for yourself what God is saying in the scripture hallelujah god reveals himself here's another thing i like about these these discovery studies we're doing is they focus on your obedience not just on you getting knowledge and a mistake in the American church, the mistake we've made, frankly, at Good News Church over the years has been that we focus so much on knowledge that there are times we've forsaken obedience. And he said, Jesus, he's the he, in Matthew 28, he said we're to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey. Not just teaching them so they know, but teach them to obey. He's expecting us to obey. And so that's a real key component of a discovery study is the obedience part. And then the other thing is, as we talked about the, um, we've talked about this several times, is that because the last thing that we do in the study is, how, who are we going to tell this to? Who are you going to share this with? And we're looking for a name. Who are you going to share this with? So it starts the process of you passing on what you're learning because as followers of Christ we are to always be passing on what we receive from him we pass on what we receive we are we are never never the end point we are a vessel and so it gets you really in the rhythm of passing on and sadly in our in in the church today and by the church I mean the big C the church universal we have become just receptors and it ends with us, and we pass very little on. I mean, we pass very little on to our kids, much less to our neighbors, to our coworkers, to our other family members, to the people around us, to our friends. We, we just pass very little on, but it should flow through us, not just to us. So there we go. I got a little thing here to kind of help you tonight, help you to see why we do what we're doing. Um, Sharon, can you do the timing, or do you need me to time it? Oh, uh, about 30 seconds. Can you do that? In just a moment, I'm gonna, they're going to put something on the screen, and um, I want you all to look. It would be good if you could turn down these, um, these stage lights so they can see better before you do it. And she's going to put it up here for a few seconds. I want you to look at this, and I want you to try to remember everything you can from what she's going to show you. Wake up. Some of you might have fallen asleep. I know you've been up a long time. So, uh, what did y'all see? Animals? Did you see animals? Who saw animals? All right. What kind of animals did you see? A tiger. Let's get this. A tiger, a mouse, and a what? An elephant, elephant and a fox. A giraffe and a hippo? There actually was not a hippo, but I understand why you said a hippo. Was that you, Jolene? I understand which one you're calling a hippo, but it wasn't a hippo. Does anybody know what it was? A, why was it a rhino? It had a horn, okay. All right, what, el- what color was the elephant? Purple? Okay, what else did you see? A what? A toucan? There you go. A bear? Wait a minute, you said a squirrel? What color was the bear? Was there anything interesting about the bear other than him being brown? Was there any other features? His turn? 
Miss Luke, did you see anything else? There was something kind of small about them. Did you see anything small about them? No, you might not could have seen it. Okay. All right, anything else? I was going to say a raccoon. Who said raccoon? Okay. Anything interesting about the raccoon? A mustache, no, he, but his eyes were just, he looked like he wore false eyelashes and had the, and had the eye kit. <laughs> Anybody else? Anything else? So we had a toucan, a fox. Yeah, like a parrot looking. Were there any other birds? A small bird, what color was he? There was a kind of a toucan parrot looking, and then there was another. I just heard another word for a bird. Was there, there was a smaller bird. Does anybody know what color he was? It was like reddish, orange. And then there was another bird, an owl. That's owl? There's one animal no one's mentioned. A what? A giraffe? Well, somebody said him, but yeah. A lion? So, I think somebody said him. A tiger? There was not a tiger. There was a tiger. You were right. I'm looking at the picture and I'm missing it. Yeah, you a top right. Very good. Any other animals? A zebra. You may see the zebra. What color was the zebra? Exactly. He was black and white stripes. So a little yeah, yeah, it was a trick. So was there an ostrich? A, did, nobody said the snake. Anybody see the snake? It's because there wasn't a snake. I was tricking you. Okay. <laughs> and somebody said a mouse, but I think that wasn't a mouse. I think it was something else. There was a squirrel, but there's another thing. It, I don't know if it's a mouse. Maybe it is a mouse. A monkey? I think he was a monkey. Did you say a rat? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think it's a monkey and not a mouse. And then did anybody say the, there, there's something that has a cotton tail? Did anybody say that? Bunny rabbit? Okay. All right, so that's good. Now, the moral of this story, the reason we did this, because Jesus made the ant. No, Jesus loves all the animals. No, it's because I wanted to illustrate to you the fact, one of the most powerful things about discovery studies is this that together we remember a lot more than we do individually. Because there's no one here who could have named all 16 of these animals. And even, it's interesting because Jolene said there was a hippo, which when I first looked at it, until I studied it, I thought it was a hippo too. And at first glance, I mean, you know, you're looking at it, you think, it, oh, there's a hippo, and you go on. But then Arlene saw, wait a minute, there's a horn. That made it not a hippo, but a rhino. So together, you both saw something, but she got the horn, you got the big gray thing, you know? And so we, we together remember a lot more than we ever could individually. And the same is true when we study the Bible together. And you, those of you who've been here for some of our studies, you notice when we study the Bible, there's so much more that comes out, and there's so much more that we can even remember. Um, I remember the first time I did a discovery study we read it and we reread it, and the guy who was leading the study even told the story. So I'd heard it three times, and I'm a preacher. And I actually read my Bible, but I couldn't tell the story. <laughs> when they got through, I'm like, like I could only, I could, like, I didn't, I was missing whole parts of it. And it showed me that it, we think we got it a lot more than we do have it, you know? And so, how many of you have noticed when you start to tell the story, or maybe, let me ask you this, how many of you notice when someone else in your group has been telling the story, they leave out like parts, and you're wanting to jump in and tell them? And that's really what we do, is we, together, we remember more than we do individually. And y'all, that's a wonderful thing, because in reality, we're not just individuals. We are, we are more of a body than we are individuals. We are groups together, and we have each other, and we can depend on each other. So when we study the scripture together, here we are, and we're adding to each other, and we're learning together. And it's been proven that I hate to say anything about education in front of this man. He's an education specialist, and I almost said something, and he was going to correct me later. So I'm going to skip that. 
If Jim Stevens wasn't here, though, I would tell you <laughs> that it has studies have shown that groups learn more together than people do individually learning. That when you learn as a group, you tend to learn more. And so just the dynamics of interacting and as a group together. At least that's what I read in a book. <laughs> and here's, an, here's two more final things before we get into it. And one of them is this. When you're in a group, there is a component of self-correction. When I read scripture myself, I see things in it. But not everything I see in it is necessarily actually in it. And I shared that with you last week, that one time I was doing a, a Discovery Bible study with a group, and we're doing it with, our, with some leaders here together. And we, as we go through, we're doing a passage that I've taught from, and I've taught from it several times. I've taught you from this passage. And as I, we went through it, I know this passage because I've taught from it. It's a story I know. I'm telling the story, and I'm telling it in my way that I like to tell it, except the things I was telling weren't, not all of them were actually in the scripture. And so that, I'm going along, and Grayson, my baby kid, says, well, that's not in there. And I'm like, well, yes, it is, young man, I know. He says, no, it's not. And we read the scripture, and he was right, and I was wrong. And I felt, I felt humble, because if you don't humble yourself, you'll be humbled. And so I was humbled. But beyond that, I felt terrible, because I thought, I've stood in front of people and taught this wrong. I told them something was in it, and it wasn't even there. So if I've done that, I can tell you this, your favorite preacher, whoever that may be, has probably done it. And you've probably done it when you've just read stuff in. And see, we just tend to read like, oh, yeah, and we read. We don't read for what's really there. We just read for what we already know, and we're just moving along. And so there is this element of self-correction in a group. And I'll show you, not to pick on Jolene, but Jolene said it's a hippopotamus. And I understand why she thought it was a hippopotamus. Several people here probably thought it was a hippopotamus. But that element of group self-correction came in, and Arlene goes, but there was a horn. That was bringing some correction. And there were a couple of other things that happened that people said, this is here, and it was actually something else. And then I said, there was no tiger. And Tanya said, oh, yeah, there was. And I thought I knew. I thought, there isn't a tiger. And she's like, uh-huh. And then somebody over here said, yeah, it was on the top at the right. And I looked at the picture, and lo and behold, there it was. So there's that element of self-correction that takes place. That's, that's a safety that God has given us, you know, because here I am, I'm the leader, and I'm saying there's no tiger in it. And you can see for yourselves, yeah, there is. And so you're correcting me. That's wonderful, right? That together we get, we get a lot more accurate picture together. And then the final thing is groups encourage accountability. Now, not as much the way we've been doing it because we've been sort of doing arbitrary groups each week, but when you do a discovery study on an ongoing basis with someone else or someone's else and you meet with them regularly, there will grow between you accountability because you'll make statements, well, I will, because we do that, I will. Last week, I will serve. Who did you say you were going to serve, Nate? Okay, so you had this thing about being more mindful of interacting. And so you were in a group last week with Michelle and Carol, which neither one of them are here tonight to hold you accountable. But if you were meeting with them week by week, then they would look at you and say, well, tell us what you did. And you would either say, well, I did this and I did that, or you'll say, well, you know, I really hadn't even thought of it since last week. And then they'll say, well, buddy, you need to, you need to step up here. That's accountability, right? Maddie, what did you say you were going to do? I'm going to serve my mother? No, what? You don't remember. You need to step it up. <laughs> so, that, see, there's that element of accountability that we bring. So that's, that's what we're doing with these studies. So we're going to stop this, and we're going to move along to our study. First of all, I, rec I realize a lot of you weren't here last week. Who has been here at least two of these discovery studies? 
if, in fact, once you stand up, if you've been here for at least two of them. Okay. Now, what I would like to invite the rest of you to do, it's arbitrary, and I know we have some people that aren't normally here on Wednesday night. Are y'all okay with all this? Okay, good. All right, what we're going to do, are y'all okay? I mean, they said they were okay, but how about you? I don't know how old you are, but there are younger people in the back, too, if you're open to that. But anyway, it's up to you. <laughs> you aren't always stuck with people like me. Um, but if you've been here for two, that means you at least have some idea of what we're doing, and you can read the paper. So I invite the rest of you to join up with them in groups of three, two or three, and let's go through it together. Not four, four is too many. So do two or three groups of two or three. Are y'all okay with that? Okay. So, and I can help you find a group if you need to. And so if y'all just move out from where you are and join up in groups of two or three. Y'all been doing so well. <laughs> just teasing you in. Can you pass this in? For everybody to have one. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. Is everybody confident? Are you?
If y'all are close to being done, we'll share some with the big group. If some of y'all, is it, are any of the groups done? Group there, this group, that group. Couple, y'all go ahead. Are, you, are y'all done yet? Okay. If you're not, just continue on. If, if you haven't finished, you just continue on, but we're going we're gonna to take some uh, group discussion. Who, who wants to tell me something that you saw about God in here? What did we see about God? Yes, Tanya? She's got to look. <laughs> that he prepares a feast. God's prepared a feast. I like that about God. Yes? He came to his people first, and when they rejected him, came to other people. Okay? What did we see about people? What, what did you say? People make excuses. People, give, people are full of excuses. Anything else you see about people? They didn't really want the banquet. No commitment. People lack commitment. They put other things first. Do what? They're very polite about saying no. They have really good, (laughs) very polite about saying no. Somebody said, I heard somebody in a group say, people hang out behind the hedges. I don't know what they're doing. They're behind the hedges. Yeah, see, is that? So what? So we saw some things about God. We saw some things about people. The things we saw about God. God's prepared a feast. He's inviting, inviting people. That's a great thing about God, isn't it? He's inviting people. Not everybody thinks that about God. That's an important thing to understand. He's a God. He's prepared a feast. So he's not a big bad God. And then he's inviting people. Oh, that's really good, Kelly. Two, yeah, three-pointer right there. He, he saw that God used other people to invite people to his banquet, to his feast. That's, that's good. Well, that was a good one. Good insight. And he doesn't force people to come. These are really, but y'all, now think about, let's just take a little break. Think about if you were doing this with someone who wasn't a follower of Christ, someone who hadn't yet come to faith, or and they didn't, you know, have a good view of who God was. Maybe they don't know who God is. Look at how much they could learn about who God really is just by this this story. They'd see God's got a feast. That sounds pretty good. He's inviting people. If the first people he invites doesn't come, he looks for other people. He uses people to invite people. And what was it you just said? He doesn't force you to come. This, uh, these are real um, key characteristics of God's nature, that he he's, he's honors people's free will. This is, these are important things. All right. That was awesome, y'all. Y'all are getting good at these. And then, and then anything else about people? People make excuses. Not everybody wants to follow Jesus. Not everybody wants to come to the feast. Y'all. Any other things y'all see? Nate, y'all have any great things back there? Okay, just say it, and I'll tell you if you repeat it, you know. Yeah, yeah, well. (laughs) 
that happens. Okay. People are missing out. People miss out on what God has for them. They miss out on this great feast for just really bad reasons. So. People value physical, natural relationships and more than the kingdom. Yes, Larry? Oh, okay. You were saying praise. He had his hand up. What about I will statements? Anybody have some I will statements that they want to share? Uh, how are you going to obey? I will invite people to the banquet. That's awesome. <laughs> Anything else? I, I heard when I was going around, I heard somebody say this. I thought this was pretty, this was a really good I will statement. It kind of hit home with me is, I will say yes to invitations that other people offer me instead of always being no, no, no. You know, in our culture, in our day, we all have the no ready to go. We all have the excuse ready. And instead of just jumping out with the no's and the excuses, I'll be more open and say yes. I thought that was a good I will statement. I'll say yes to more. Anything else? Say yes to God. <laughs> I, I know what you mean, Kimberly. Yeah, say yes to God, whatever he's telling you, even if it's like, are you sure? Yeah. Y yes, Mala? I will put down my excuses no matter how good I think they are. Yeah. Is there one back here I saw? Yes, James. Sure. Absolutely. So, yeah, the, the, the king. This is a real lesson about how the what's been offered us in the kingdom. Do you guys have anything you want to share? Nothing like being put on the spot. I'm sure you got something good. Come on. It's interesting. real good yeah that was real good as a whole I, I could preach on that that was great man well well we'll go because it's 8 17 and we try to stop at 8 15 but y'all are getting y'all are getting good at these and y'all are doing well with your facilitating very proud of you all right thank you